Google has officially started rolling out stable Android 10 builds for Pixel devices. We got it on our Pixel 2 XL and 3 XL and have been spending some time with it. In today's video, let's take a look at 10 new things Android 10 brings to the table. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Realtek and if you do end up liking what you see here, please consider turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. Number one, no more dessert names. Yep, you heard me right. No more names like jelly bean, ice cream sandwich, Kit Kat or pie, at least as far as Android versions are concerned. Google has now decided to cancel the trend of naming Android versions after desserts because of how far Android has spread and confusion amongst customers from different countries and so on. So Android Q, it's just gonna be simple old Android 10 you know, like iOS, it's all a sad part of creating a new cleaner brand image for Android. And the Android bot is now part of the new logo. Internally though, Google will continue to use desert names like Android 10 or Q. Internally, it's being called Quinstart. So rest in peace, Queen Cake, we hardly knew you. Number two, system-wide dark mode. Now this is something we've already seen a bit of with Android 9 Pie. Here with Android 10 though, Google's made, uh, made it a system-wide option. Click on the dark theme button from quick settings anytime to instantly switch to a system-wide dark mode. Google has also implemented an API that would automatically allow apps to switch over to the dark theme whenever the quick setting is toggled. Well, support from third-party apps is kind of lackluster at the moment. That should change in the future once Android 10 starts rolling out to more and more devices. This is a pretty impressive feature. I really can't wait to see more devs bake in support for it. Number three, new navigation. Android 10 has introduced a brand new gesture navigation system. And this is pretty intuitive. Now the pill and back combo that's gone, it's all about gestures here. Swipe up from the bottom of the home screen, that takes you home. Swipe and hold for recents. And swipe along the line for quick switching between apps. So how do you go back? Well, swapping inwards from the sides, it takes you back, kind of what we've seen with MIUI. But this causes a problem. It, it leads us to a conundrum, right? Don't we already use this gesture, the swipe, to kind of pull in menus like with the Play Store or Twitter? So what then? Do we go back to reaching all the way up and tapping on the relevant icons? Actually, no. Google's come up with a quirky, but again, intuitive solution here. Swipe down or up from the side in a cross manner to kind of trigger these menus. It's going to take a little getting used to, but it does feel natural. I like it. Number four, revamped permission settings. Google has reworked the way permissions work in Android, and I really like this approach. We all know of apps that refuse to function without a specific permission, like say location information, but we don't want them to have access to location info all day. Now we can enable that permission for only when that app is in use. So in case uh, you want to do that, go to permission manager, select location, find the app in question. Let's take this one for example. Make sure we have it set to access location only when in use. I think this is a very good step forward with regards to making Android a more secure platform. By the way, the app info page, it has gone through a visual overhaul too. We can see how many notifications a particular app is sending us, what permissions we've granted it and whatnot. Number five, faster sharing options. The share button on Android, it's been iffy at times in some apps when you hit it. At times even with flagship hardware and the latest Android updates, you could still you know, have a second of a slowdown. Android 10 is looking to set things right, get rid of that uh, by revamping sharing. The core functionality, it remains the same, but here the options are preloaded and that should make things faster. We also get sharing shortcuts that allows developers to specifically code in faster sharing options within their apps for certain types of images or files. Number six, live captions, they're amazing. Accessibility features are awesome because they help the differently able to use and enjoy the benefits of a smartphone. And with Android 10, we have a new one, live captions. This basically adds text transcribing to any local video that you might watch on your phone. 
What's more, it does not require you to be connected to the internet. You don't have to be online, so you can use it at any time. It's a pretty straightforward but amazing feature for people with hearing disabilities. Number seven, themes are here. Kinda. Now, we have a few theming options on Android 10, but for some reason, Google has hidden them away inside developer options. Scroll down to the very end and you can see the theming options. You can change the hues to any of these seven colors. This is how it looks. And you can also change the icon shape and the font. The latter though only has a couple of options. While not much, I hope it's the start of something much bigger. Number eight, digital well-being for the entire family. Smartphone addiction has become a real problem, especially with teens and kids being glued to smartphones all the time. This is why digital well-being is now giving parents an option to monitor kids' usage right from the app itself. For this, you do have a little bit of prep work. Get an app called Family Link on both devices, but if you are worried about how much time your kids are spending on the phone, this might just be worth the hassle for you. Number nine, focus mode. Focus mode is also part of digital well-being and kind of reminds me of OnePlus' Zen mode, except this one is not so extreme. Basically, it lets you choose and block out certain apps. Those app icons, they appear grayed out and you won't receive notifications from them while you are in focus mode. You can toggle focus mode on and off with an easy toggle from the quick settings. And finally, we come to number 10. Android officially supports folding phones, which means designing software for phones like the Galaxy Fold, the Huawei Mate X, or that rumored Xiaomi phone. It just became a whole lot easier. So that's at least one more obstacle clear towards a future where we carry around 12 inch tablets that fold ever so neatly into five inch phones. Now, of course, these lists are never gonna be complete without a bonus point. So here we go. Number 11, desktop mode on Android. Stock Android seems to have a very rudimentary desktop mode up and running uh, with Android 10. It's nowhere near as full-fledged as Dex on the Note 10 series, but it seems like Google is working towards something similar. For now, we didn't get to test it out ourselves because of some technical limitations, but here's the desktop mode running on a OnePlus 7 Pro, and you can see mentions of it in developer options as well. And that about wraps up this video. Which one of these 10? Well, technically 11 features. Out of all of them, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you feel I missed out on any, any major uh, feature here, let me know in the comments too. And uh, is your phone receiving Android 10? What, are, what phone are you using? Has your manufacturer promised Android 10? Tell me all about it in the comments. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.